Hello, people watching online. We are going to look at some of the stuff that we've already done before. So 10.8 looks at expanding two sets of brackets, which we did last year. We just can't nearly remember it. And we're going to add one thing to it. So if I give you this, who remembers the little acronym we have to know how to expand these brackets? FOIL. FOIL. Excellent. What does it stand for? First, outside, inside. First, outside, inside, last. Is this all ringing a bell and the screen keeps dying? That keeps happening. Ringing a bell? Don't say X2. What is it? X squared. Okay, so let's go through the process. So F stands for first. So we're going to multiply the first two terms. So we get X squared. Anything times by itself is squared. Okay, yeah, let's not do the cheats bit first, but we'll go to that in a second. So then we do the outside two. What do we get? plus 5x, then the inside 2, plus 2x, and then the last two terms, plus 10. Okay, Deborah, you told me the cheats way before. How did you get that? So I'm going to collect my like terms. These are the bits that match. So how did you know it was 7x without doing it before? Okay, good. So remember the shortcut to get to the end version is the middle term is these two numbers added together and the last term is these two numbers multiplied together so remember that little shortcut you take the two numbers you add them together for the middle term multiply them for the last term yeah well it depends on the sign in the question so let's do one where we have different signs so if i had x plus three and x minus four okay so we're going to do the same thing. Let's do the outside ones. What do we get? So the first ones, what do we get? X squared. And then the outside ones. Right. So watch our sign now. This is X times minus four. So minus four X, then the inside plus three X. And then the last two minus 12, because it's three times negative four. Now we still have two like terms that we're going to put together, but we need to watch our sign. So negative four plus three is minus one. That's right. So again, same thing is true. So you add together the two numbers. So let's stick with the same color scheme. If we add three and negative four, we get negative one. That's what this is. And then if we multiply, oh, should have swapped to blue. And then if we multiply three and negative four, we get negative 12. So it still works. If you can't remember the shortcut, it doesn't matter. You just use the FOIL acronym and you always get the right answer. But if you want to jump to the last bit, you can. Okay, let's now do one with fractions because we haven't done that before. Okay, I'm going to save this, delete it. Okay, so let's do one where we have fractions. I'm going to pick a slightly darker color. So what if I have x um, minus 2 and then x plus 1 third? Actually, I'm going to change that number just to make life a bit easier for us. Let's make that 6. Okay, so now I'm still going to use my FOIL acronym, but it's a little trickier this time because I've got some fractions involved. So I'm going to multiply that so I get my x squared like usual. Then I'm going to multiply these two. What do I get? Ooh, what? The outside ones? Yeah, outside ones. I know you are. So I'm just getting plus a third x, right? It's okay to have fractions. A third times x is one third x. Then we do the middle one, minus six x. Now we do the outside one. So what do I have? Minus two. All right, so negative six times a third. A third of negative six is negative two. Now I've got like terms to put together again. What do I get? Okay, so there are two ways we can do it. We can have a mixed number or an improper fraction. I could have minus five and two thirds X, or what did you say it was also C1? Minus 17 over three X minus two. Both of these answers are completely fine. I don't mind which version you give me unless the question is being specific, but I don't think it is. Okay, so we can also do the same thing with fractions. We can also do the same thing with three sets of brackets. And it's not hard, it's just an extra step. So let's do x plus two, x minus three, x plus 
five. Okay, what I'm going to do is pick any two I like, right? It doesn't matter which order you multiply things in. Remember, the commutative law says I can multiply things in any order and the answer is the same. Three times five is 15, five times three is 15. Who cares, right? So what I'm going to do is just pick any two. I'm going to pick the last two because I can. I could pick the first two. It really makes no difference. So I'm going to leave x plus 2 and pretend it doesn't exist. I'm going to ignore it. So I'm going to foil this one. So x times x. x squared. I mean, you can. It makes no difference. Yeah. That's what we're going to do in a minute. Absolutely, we are. So let's do all of this together. So then I do the outside ones plus 5x, the inside ones minus 3x, and the last ones minus 15. Okay, now I'm going to put them together so I have less things to do this time. x squared what? Plus 2x minus 15. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to multiply x by all three of these parts. Then I'm going to multiply 2 by all three parts. Okay, so I need to do everything in the first set of brackets by everything in the big set of brackets. So it's not harder, it's just more of the same. So x times x squared is x cubed. Now, people were making this mistake this morning. Watch it. When you're multiplying an extra x, you add one to the power. Then x times 2x plus 2x squared. Then x times negative 15. So minus 15x. Now we've got to keep going. So now it's 2 times everything. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. And then 2 times 2x is 4x. And then 2 times negative 15 is negative 30. Now I've got a couple of different things I can put together. I've got a few like terms. So I've got no other x cubed, so that gets to stay the same. How many x squareds do I have? 4. I've got 2 here plus another 2 here. So I have 4x squared. Then I've got negative 15x plus 4x. So how many do I have? minus 11x, and then I don't have any other plain numbers, so the negative 30 stays by itself. Nothing else matches, so I'm done. I know there's a lot of steps in this question, but it's exactly the same as the other stuff. You just have to do a little bit more of it. Okay, so this is how you expand three sets of brackets. All right, let's, oh, come on screen. Let's do one more example where there are more numbers involved. So what if I did, I don't think there's any examples like that. No, let's not do that. Okay. What if I did 2 plus 3b and then 5 minus 6b? So this time the letter is in the wrong place and I've got numbers attached to it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's still exactly the same question. So I'm still going to start with my first ones. What do I get? 10, 10 outside. And then minus 12b inside. Plus 15b and my last minus 18b squared. There are two b's, so don't forget your squared. Now I've got middle terms that match. So 10, what does this become? Plus 3b minus 18b squared. Now, normally we write this in a different order. This would still be correct, but if we wrote it, so normally when we, oh my gosh, come on screen. Normally when we put things in the order of terms, we start with the highest power and then go to the next highest power and so on. So I should actually have negative 18b squared plus 3b plus 10. So make sure you take each term with the sign in front of it. So the negative 18b is still negative 18b squared. This is still positive and so is the 10. Okay, so today we're working on exercise 10.8. Um, I will give you an example of when they most often use this in exams. So one of the practical applications of a question like this might be, give me the volume of a, of a box, right? So if you get a triangular, sorry, a rectangular pyramid, a prism. So if they give you something like this and say, this is X plus one, this is X plus two, and this is x plus 7, what is the volume of the box? Isn't that an example of when you would multiply three sets of brackets together? 
So that is one of the ways that they often use these types of questions and exams to then say, right, give me the volume. So the volume is the three sides multiplied together. And then you expand your brackets and find out what it would be. Why is the... Okay, this happened, this happened this morning when I was using it. I think there's something wrong with the plug. <laughs> okay, we're back. All right. So then the volume is the length by the height by the width, right? That's how we would do it. And then we would expand our brackets and that would give us the volume of the box. Then they might say, if X was three, what's the volume of the box? And you can substitute it in later. 